transitioned and all those events and everything turned into all these plaques in YouTube, which like in Snapchat, these are all like key cards, like couple day stays in different places to go oh, to right, some right. event or music festival. Like, all the hotels you stayed in. Bro, I hate music festivals now because I've been to so many of them. Dude, and it I, wasn't even my music, it was all the hipster music. I'm like, like, a, I'm, an, like I'm an experienced guy. Cool. Everything from uh, if someone needs a pitch deck to creating a logo to creating a website to doing whatever they need to do. Um, they have a creative agency that can do it yeah. for them. So say we want to do an animation studio or whatever this new project is, instead of them having to build a logo, build a website, do all this different stuff, run their socials, they can just be an animation studio and the triangle does the rest for them. So Nebula does all the creative, Satellite tells the story, runs the socials, does ads, like does whatever else they need to do. And then Labs creates the merchandise and the products and all that stuff. So all of our companies have merchant products. All of them have socials and tell their story and document things and cool. recaps yeah. and everything. Smart. But instead of teaching nine companies to all tell their story really good, we just have one awesome triangle that does it really well and they help the nine companies do it and they can just focus on their line. Yeah, their, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of cool, Smart, huh? Smart, baby. <laughs> I'd love to start your podcast. Just yes. different every time. We could just roll right into it from this if sure, we wanted to. I like that. We're going to start it with a, heart, a high five. Dude, you... Uh, you were a star, man. A YouTube star, a Snapchat star. Snapchatter. They're, I'm the only you Snapchatter that's served the same not many people, platform. Not many people have that title, bro. Yeah. I mean, it might be the only Snapchatter, but no, nah, I'm not a Snapchatter. I'm more of a YouTuber. And there's many good YouTubers that I've learned a bunch from them. And hopefully you guys can learn a bunch from me. Well, it's cool because you had a vision. I mean, it's, and we were talking about this before, but it's easy to look back now and as we know what's developed as far as the way the world's gone and go, oh, it was obvious that this was going to happen. But it was so not obvious back then. I mean, nobody yeah. had the foresight. Nobody had the vision. Um, you did. So maybe speak to that a little bit. Like, how did you have the conviction? Or what was it that convinced you that, hey, this is worth putting my heart and soul and all my time and effort money? Yeah, yeah, because it wasn't about influence or marketing or the creator economy at the beginning because we, we didn't have that figured out. For me, I always grew up like having fun making videos. Like that's what we talked. We already did like an hour long podcast that was amazing. And they're like, oh, we should probably film a bunch of these good combos. So that's what we spoke to earlier. You used to make videos and hang out and the passion continues. And that was mine too, whether it was skateboarding or just doing Fear Factor with my little sisters, you know, it was like we're always filming silly videos. And so it, I, I enjoyed skateboarding, action sports, all that. And as I got into like growth, like what do I want to do with my life? What kind of impact do I want to leave on the world, right? was like, well, I want to be able to create videos and tell stories and do that fun stuff I've always done. And I saw people doing that on YouTube. It's like, I don't want to do that. But he already was Devin Supertramp here in YouTube. Oh, yeah. He already had 100,000 followers. And I was like, he already has 100,000. So I'm late to that. What else could I do? And then it was Vine. But it was like, oh, I'm like six months late to Vine. I missed that train. You know, I started six months late. But that was the mentality at the time because there was already the Logan Pauls and everything else. So I was like, I'll do the next one. And then within the next couple of months, Snapchat started taking off. And so I just had this goal to actually be famous on snapchat but not from uh i want like people always say creators always say like oh i didn't do it to get famous i did it for the art like i have always loved art or filming or whatever it's true but with snapchat i did it to get famous i was like can i make this my career can i tell a good enough story and and keep people intrigued and use art and do all this different stuff that brands would want to work with me and i could tell their story and then this could be my career telling people's story on social media just like youtubers do but i'm too late to that boat so then i tried to get that to happen on snapchat it worked Became a Snapchatter, awesome two years, worked with a ton of great brands, the Disney's, Red Bulls, Taco Bells, and then I was like, all right, now for longevity. Well, hold on a second, hold on, because you said it worked, and that was, I feel like we skipped a ginormous- We skipped two years, but it worked. Well, there's a lot to learn, right? <laughs> yeah, like, so so years. I want to kind of back it into a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so how did you make that work? Because I think Snapchat made a lot more people infamous than it did famous. Yeah, for sure. And it's gay, you know? Sure, made things literally no one famous but me would- to this day and yeah so of, talk yeah. about what you did i mean the grind i, I saw the your path you know and i've, I've we talked about this again and the and key what cards pop up the key cards the, yeah we, we walked through my office there's all the key cards of like all the trips all the lanyards and if you got that footage popping up right here so they have context yeah, yeah. that's what it took that it will cut out us talking about editing that <laughs> okay <laughs> but uh yeah that's that's it right there is that like visiting that many places going to that many events meeting that many people I was always networking, so it wasn't about, like, go do this event and then go parties. Like, go do this event and then hang out with the Samsung people that invited me to the event so they'd invite me back or go hang out with the band so I can get to know them better or whatever it was. And same thing that you've always done within your industry is just you meet good people and learn what you can from them. Well, and so as you were doing this and building up Snapchat, at what point did you realize, oh, I might have a problem here. Snapchat maybe isn't the best platform to, to get. Oh, always since the very beginning. I picked the worst platform, but again... Timing is so much of everything, you know, and 
even if it's just in your head, like it was in my head that I was late to YouTube. No one's ever late to YouTube. You could start right, so right now. You really should for start sure. YouTube. But at the time, it felt like I was late. And in many ways, like getting big on TikTok right now is harder than when it first happened or Vine when it first happened, right? So I felt like I needed to be the first to the next social media platform. And for a minute there, it was so fast, right? It was like Instagram, YouTube, Vine, Snapchat, like all four of those big platforms came out like near each other. So I was like, oh, this is just going to keep happening forever. And I'll just get famous on the next one. So I did it on Snapchat. And then from there, it really slowed down till about TikTok. There was Musical.ly and some other stuff that everyone played around with. But TikTok was the next big one. It wasn't for a couple of years. So I kind of had the last platform, wrote as long as I could. Like we talked about earlier, the amazing part to Snapchat is the conversion ratio. It was, it was changed. Social media had always been content creators and people consuming Snapchat. You looked at it and that's how people communicated. Like it was texting for a lot of people, right? So they would look in their text messages to hit their friends, and that's where they would see my message and re re react or relate with me, right? Where YouTube, you go to consume content, and that person's untangible, just like an actor is on TV, and you just get entertained by them. But on Snapchat, you talk to your friends. So me being famous on Snapchat, you know, looking at the silver lining while it was harder and it disappeared and there wasn't a follow button or a trending page or any of these other things that, like, inhibited me, it had this real sense of relationship, build genuine relationships. And so when I did my call to action and said, hey, go follow this account, go check out Red Bull's thing or Samsung's thing, 33% of my audience would go convert over and go do what I said. And that kind of call to action didn't exist ever before on any social media. And it hasn't existed since on any social media. Right now, my call to action is not one fifth what it used to be during those like Snapchat days. Yeah, I feel like almost every platform, they almost decided that we're no longer going to let you yeah, because they back are, yep. unless we're getting a piece of it. Right? But think about this. Just like that's true, the algorithms slow you down and don't promote it, do everything like you just said. Snapchat was so bad, it didn't even have anything to begin with. There was no promotion. There was no button to click. If I, I told you to follow someone, you didn't even know if you actually followed their profile because they didn't even have a profile picture or profile. You just had to see if they posted the next day. You know what I mean? So, like, there wasn't even an algorithm that would suck. There was nothing and that's what made the call to action so sincere is because there's no algorithm when your friend says, go check out this movie. It's a friend recommendation. And that's more powerful than watching an ad for the movie on any other platform. So you, I mean, you took it from that. So you decide, okay, I'm going to try to blow this up. I'm going to do this. And you now have over a hundred employees working yeah. full time. I mean, working this ginormous operation, which is space station, everything else that you got going mm -hmm. on. So for when somebody looks at you and says, this is, okay, I want to do that. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I mean, on your Instagram profile, it says, you know, that you just want to be the person of fun. You just want to be a professional, first, fun, professional happer. fun happer. Casey Neistat gave me that name. Dude, it's like, I'm a YouTuber. That, right? And I was like, well, I'm not really a Snapchatter because we both knew Snapchat wasn't going to last. He's like, you're like a professional fun happer. You go have fun and you tell the story of it. I was like, I like that better than Snapchatter. So that's what I've rolled with ever since. Well, I mean, every kid's dream is to be a professional fun. I remember when I was a kid, the only thing I didn't want to be when I was a doll was boring. Yep. I just wanted to have fun. I wanted yeah. to be somebody that when I showed up, people were like, oh, yeah, this guy's here. It's going to be a better time. Same. And that was the goal. That's what you've created. Did a huge business lifestyle out of that. Yeah. I, and I have too. Like one of my buddies, yeah. it was funny the other day. I, I inspired other people to do it. That's what's cool. That is what it's cool. But I was with my group in Iceland. There was 39 of us. I saw that one. So dude, cool. it was so much fun. It's just, just, I mean, picture having, it's almost like, scout camp but as adults yeah. that you're like mature dude i know a couple of people who have done your it's so cool to hear their experiences and like what they really get from it and it's, sorry can, can no, no, no. story well i one of my best buddies was he saw you know everybody posting about right. and he was said he was sitting in his office and he works for a tech company that works with school systems and then just kind yeah. of a boring job but like also very legit. I mean, the guy makes oh, yeah, yeah. figures doing Important it, right? job, but, but he's making not as fulfilling. Yeah, as so I said, he's, set, he's sitting there looking in his computer, and he's watching me do this trip, and he's like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Jimmy somehow hacked life that he's legitimately just having fun all day long, helping people become the best version of themselves, and getting paid a lot of money to do it. It was just like that. And so he's, his, his wills just started turning and turning. He's just like, he's, like, he's just like, you son of a bitch, you know, yeah. sitting there. But anyway. So it is, it's cool to be able to look back. I mean, but I think the part that I think a lot of people miss, and maybe with you, if you can get into it a little bit is, and that's why I keep calling back into your story is they want the result, but they don't really see what it means. Yeah. I mean, they don't really understand that, how so hard we work to get. Past. When we were cruising through the space station, we passed this wall and it has all these pictures from different places with different people, events, et cetera. And I love that wall because 
it shows what it took to get here. You need to meet the right people and build genuine relationships. You need to travel and experience and learn. Like I had to go tell a whole bunch of stories to learn how to tell better stories, to learn how to tell better stories, to learn how to tell the ultimate story. You know what I mean? Keeps going. So like that whole wall of experiences and five years being a Snapchatter and a YouTuber has led to everything you just said, this whole space station and um, the hundred people there, we call them crew, like space station crew, okay. because it really isn't, there's no company or job here to have an employee for. It's like, we have an opportunity because the creator economy is growing and we have a community that cares about us and we have the opportunity to build apps for them if they want or build an esports team that they can root for or create animations that they can go enjoy, right? And if we take those opportunities and expand them further, it creates more and more opportunity. So I find people that are just good people, guys like from your Jonah, the way I, I found you, right? Good people. And we pu plug it into the space station and say, here are some opportunities we have. Do you have the skill set to chase this one? And then we all chase it. And then if it works out, another opportunity. It all stays under one big umbrella called the space station. But really, the space station isn't a company. There isn't a company here that has 100 employees. There's a YouTube channel that has five employees and an animation studio we're in right now that has 30 employees and this and that, right? But it's not one big thing. It's just a whole bunch of opportunities. And if you find the right people to work hard on them and realize those, they create their own future and they're passionate about it. And you just got to give them that opportunity and help them make those connections. And then they got to go create their own wall of experiences over the next couple of years that will take all those little companies that I just mentioned even further into the creator economy, which I do believe heavily in. Yeah, oh, same. I mean, we're coming into 2023. I think within 10 years, there won't even be the difference between celebrities and creators. It's, it already is happening where, you see, you know, people don't hire um, they hire the creators, they hire the people yeah. that have the audience to kind of do all the marketing. And so that's going to be more and more what we're going to end up seeing. And then as more and more creators create their own brands and have their own ownership incomes, I mean, you're an investor in how many companies yourself? Yeah. So we did space station investments to help invest in and, and believe in other people's stories because that's what we're doing with our stories. And that's been a really cool experience in the past two years. I think we've invested in probably 80 plus ideas and we've just have a great network of great individuals and all their ideas are working. And we got in at a great time when it was just taking off and it's been exciting. We've been able to benefit from their growth, but also learn from their growth. And then they're able to learn from us because they don't, a lot of these opportunities that we've invested in don't just need our money. They want our resource and our knowledge. Right. And so by jumping on their cap table and helping out in that way, we can guide their digital community building or their digital brand building or help them create a YouTube channel and, all those things that maybe they're not the best at because they're the best at whatever their industry or product is. So, I mean, investing in 80 companies, you probably pass on another several hundred, I'm guessing. But what, what do you look for when you're investing in a company? That was something that stood out to me as I, we did the tour of your office. Yeah. You've invested in all these, and a lot of them are brands that I use. They're in my pantry, Magic Spoon, yeah. Yeah. Olipop, some of these things that are yeah. literally in my my fridge in my you know pantry right now. Yeah. So what criteria are you using to decide what you invest in? Yeah. I mean, I have to obviously enjoy the product and believe in it, but I'm not super knowledgeable about healthy foods in general. And I don't even eat as healthy as I wish I did and all this different stuff. So I do believe in the health products because a lot of them are better for you products. But I believe in the change that the world's happening through COVID purchasing patterns change and people are buying online more and care about themselves more and stuff like that. So in that sense, but really, really to answer your question, it's people. I, I invest in the founder. If I meet the founder of Magic Spoon, the two founders, Magic Spoon and Gabby and Greg, they're incredible people. They're so genuine and you know they're so driven. That's like, they're going to do it. I believe in cereal as a product. I love cereal, right? And all girls won't eat cereal, but it just needs to be a little bit healthier. So it's like products there, the people are there. How can I add to this and make it better? And if I can do that, then let's let's team up. Yeah. And I think that's why Space Station Investments has worked is because it's the side hustle we're doing that comes with all the value of everything else. It's not like we're actively looking to go invest and knock on people's doors. It's like, if this is a win-win, let's link up. If not, we're not worried about it. We've got a lot going on and we keep finding more. Well, you have a unique opportunity where, you know, because of the resources that you have, because of your ability to create content and do those different things, you do bring so much to the table anytime yeah. you're working with another company. Yeah, that's true. And we want to lean into that because it's what we're best at. Like, I'm not the best at giving someone money. I, I still need money to run and build our crew and our companies, right? But I will invest a little bit into what I believe in, but I can give you a ton of value and things that I've spent years understanding and comprehending. And you don't have to spend those years traveling to all those places. And I can tell you how communities work and how you build on social and how you you jam on YouTube. We're going to make this video pop. Make sure you give it a like and a thumbs up, you know, all that stuff. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, I want to ask you that. Like, so somebody that's wanting to get 
you know, famous like you did. You wanted to be famous. You pulled it off. Um, it's in 2023. I didn't want to be famous. I wanted to have a cool job. I wanted to get paid to go on adventures. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. You wanted to blow up though on. Yeah, for sure. But I was never trying to get to LA or something. Like when I became famous on Snapchat, I was 27 years old, already married to my sweetheart, and we had a kid on the way. So it was like, <laughs> I'm not trying to get famous. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I meant more just like you wanted to become an influencer, right? I mean, and, and, and I know you knew that, but for anyone who was watching who doesn't know me, the typical view of a YouTuber is just some famous dude who has tons of money and does silly things that he'll regret later and gets paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. I want to give him context. So I was a little bit older. I was 27. So I think that's a little bit of why it worked. I didn't mm. get caught up in the fame because I already had my hot wife and my life and my family planned out. So it's like, how can I leverage this to do good and have longevity? Not like, how can I benefit from this, which is what all humans think and totally what I would have been. We even talked about this. If we would have been this on point younger, we would not have ended up this good. We needed to like learn slowly it's how to so, be professional. It's so true. Like I never would have yeah. thought, I, I, I start thinking, well, if I had YouTube when I was a kid. I yeah, would have been. That's what it was. It. But I would have made amazing videos, and then we would have been canceled by the time we were twenty. Oh, dude, I would have made exactly. some videos. My parents would have got so mad at yeah. me, taking my video camera away, yeah, and it would have never happened, right? And I would have had, I'd have had this like negative connotation to it because I'd have been in trouble, and I would have probably yeah. got shamed by somebody or whatever yeah. it might have been. I would have lost friends over something I said. Yeah. And then I wouldn't want to do it anymore. But, but yeah, well, I want to give them that context, though. Because yeah, no, it is important. One, one of the things that you do, you know, I think one of the common misconceptions with creators i've had the chance to be around enough of them now and they're brilliant i mean there's a, there's some where you meet them and you're like okay this person got lucky but the majority of them are some of the most brilliant people i've ever met like your ability to understand your own audience your ability to figure out what you need to create to create interest like what people actually like and don't yeah. like the amount of work you've put in to really hone in your messaging um, because you have so many angles. I mean, you've gone to so many different angles, yeah. right? And so you've had to figure out what do I, A, enjoy doing? What does my audience enjoy watching? Mm -hmm. What's worth, you know, actually just putting the effort in from a standpoint of making the universe a better place? Yeah. And so I think that's one of the things that a lot of people, so if somebody wants to start creating content today, where does one go to learn and get that kind of uh, knowledge, I guess, that you could say where they can actually make a difference, where they can actually make videos that will... Uh, be sustainable like you because know, that's one word i think about with you is just your ability to just continue growing yeah, yeah. sustainability right so you you hit it on the head right there um in the creators and people who have created this opportunity in a community around them they do have something special and magical but i wouldn't even call it being a genius because there's so many people that are smarter than most creators i've met and myself but, but you're right, and there's different types of genius, right? But their genius is when it comes to people and relationships and community building. And so as you're going to, if you want to be a creator and build a community around something, whether it's a YouTube channel, a podcast, we are they in real life, whatever it is, you need to have a strong like vision for what you're doing and know how to help other people see that vision and feel it and be excited about it. And if you can do that through your content, then people will want to watch and they'll want to be a part of what you're doing. The way we've built all this stuff is I'm like, guys, what if we took our videos on YouTube and we we use the same stories, but then we just animate it over so visually look different with, and everyone's got excited about that idea. It's like, well, let's try it. Now I have this community excited about it and then they want to try it and then the animation studio is born, right? But it's like, it's the people in the community and if they're into it, it works. So I think a lot of people get tripped up with like, Okay, I want to start YouTube. What kind of camera do I need? What's the best camera? What's the best editing software? What do you use? What is this? Like all different stuff. I don't use any specific camera, audio, anything. I just really focus on what do people actually want to hear and stuff like that. And that's one piece to it, right? But then from there, you have your best practices of like at the very beginning, it needs to be exciting. Watch any of my YouTube videos or daughter's YouTube videos or the animations. They start out with like all the best moments of intrigue of like, Welcome to the best day ever. Oh, our tooth fell out. The dog's over here. He almost fell off the couch. That's him or whatever. It's like, boom, another best day ever. And then you watch to see how that all plays out. But you want to see that she lost her tooth and all this stuff happened. It doesn't just start with like, what's up, guys? Another day. I hope you're ready for a journey, you know? Yeah, it's like yeah. putting the trailer in there so yeah. people have interest in the beauty, yeah. right? And then one more thing with the best practice, though, like title and thumbnail, really important because that's the cover of the movie. You go to Blockbuster, look at all the movies. You're just looking at the cover and then you pick the one you want, right? And so the thumbnail is that important that it has to make someone want to pick it, not just convey the message of it's a podcast. How do you make that interesting, right? You have to really tell like, well, we'll take a cool thumbnail after this so people know what they're getting into. We'll make a, a movie poster for this thing. Yeah, right? I think that's one of the hard part. I mean, because YouTube is one of the channels that, you know, I've got around seven or 8,000 subscribers. It's mm -hmm. not enough. It's I haven't been able to get that to pop yet. I think one of the things is oh, I haven't treated it with the care mm -hmm. that it needs. I mean, YouTube is, I think, the hardest one to figure out. I think it's why I have so much respect for YouTubers. It's 
I mean, Instagram, if you just post it and you're consistent, by the way, the word that I use for anybody is consistency. Yeah. I'm glad you said not to get too caught up in the different camera and the things like that, yeah. because even today, you know, we had to switch up with our video guys and we ended up without our normal mics. Yeah. I usually do it in a studio, my studio. But yeah. And now we were talking about that. I'm like, doesn't even matter what it looks like. This is going to be the most fun podcast because we're just going to joke around and pop up flashbacks. We did a tour earlier. Hopefully you're popping up all those moments as we're talking. All right. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it, right? Is like, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're, we did it. We've made yeah. time and you do it. And, and I think that too many people get caught up in making it perfect. And the one yeah. thing that I can say about you, the one thing I can say about all the influencers that have really popped is they are just consistent. Yeah. They're, they're consistent, right? Yeah. And they're real. That's yeah. another one. If people yeah. can just be like, they feel like they're sitting in the room. They're consistent because they are real. You can't consistently do something for 400 podcasts or 1,000 videos if you're not being real. That gets really tiring on you and the audience and everyone sees through it. So we said the same thing. If you stay consistent and be real, it actually works and that's what it takes. Yeah, and we live in a world now where it's so few of the mainstream things are real and so that's why you know someone like joe rogan gets 11 million views now on a podcast because yeah. it's just real yeah the dude is so raw sometimes and so yeah um well if people again watching this are like okay i'm gonna be a content creator um what platform would you tell people to go to right now depends on what you want to do who your demographic and audience is and where you want to speak They're like there, there's all these variables right go in and just hold what it. is the difference between the different yeah. ones well it's just be like uh Esports and gaming heavily lives on Twitter, right? Instagram is great for product sales and being able to push ads and whatnot. Yeah. YouTube is truly the only platform where you can build a giant sustainable career off of just your content and not doing ads and other stuff like that. So for me, YouTube is the clear winner. But if you're building an esports organization, Space Station Gaming is an incredible org. That's another one of the companies. And they're like the esports org of Utah. They don't have a pop in YouTube, but their Twitter is where the community lies. So for them, Twitter is the most important platform, but YouTube's a close second and Instagram and everything else, right? For me personally in the space station, all this was built from, it started on Snapchat, but it was built from YouTube and the opportunity that comes through AdSense when you get views and everything else, right? So YouTube's the best platform. You need to actually enjoy what you're doing. Be consistent. Keep it real. Use best practices. Realize how important the thumbnail is. The very beginning of the video, getting your watch time in. Actually think about what people are going to watch. It's not the quality, the story, the edit. It's how people feel from it and if they get attached to it. And then there's all the back end magic that I can't tell you guys or I'd have to kill you. <laughs> that's the other third part. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, well, I'll tell you. One thing that's fun with what you're doing, I mean, you're raising your, you know, your family on YouTube. I mean, you guys are... You have your daughter on there all the time. She's a starring. In the Not true, actually. We film one video a week on YouTube. Okay. I don't want people to get misconfused because some people will be like, oh, that's not healthy. You can't raise your family on YouTube. Like, that's unhealthy for them long term. There's been times where I've done daily videos and that was on my life. And then my family show up here and there, like space right. station and whatnot. Right now, where it's super busy and crazy, we film about one family video a week doing something fun. This week it was Christmas, or we, we don't need to date the video, but we film about one video a week. And then Adley videos, which are more kid videos, we film one or two of those a week, which those are like whatever she wants to play a game, do video games, play pretend, restaurant, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, but I didn't mean to. No, no, it's good. And it was, one, to me, once a week is a raisin, I guess, yourself. You're kind of yeah. coming up through the. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Everyone knows so. a lot about us, and I'm pretty open about that, but I think that's cool. Either, I don't know. Well, I think it's a huge, it has a huge plus, obviously. I mean, she's going to be so much farther advanced in the society and the world that we're stepping into. Yeah. Um, do you worry about her being caught up too much in it, too young, or any of that kind of stuff? No, my opinion is this is actually better. Every single, most kids are going to go through this phase where they want attention and they want more followers. They want to be seen. They want to be validated in what they're doing. And they're going to want that from social media because that's where we get it mostly. And Adley already has that and it's all over. And she doesn't care about that stuff because it's her job, mm -hmm. right? It's so like, It's like we didn't grow up with candy in the house. And so we always want candy. Yeah. But my friends that always had candy available, yeah. they just don't care. When people come to Utah, they love those mountains. And every time we film a shot, those mountains have to be in the background. It's like, that's what they're thinking about as they're filming, you know, all these YouTubers coming in. And for me, it's like, I never have those mountains in my shots. Those are just the mountain. That's how I know where the snowboard resorts are or whatever, right? right? So it's the same thing with social media. I think like it's just been her life so much that it's not this magical thing that she's going to crave. She already has it. And it's given her the opportunity to now follow her passion of like, does she want to get into animation or voiceovers or storytelling or music? And she goes and chases those passions. She's not worried about social media. 
Well, and one thing I love about it too is most kids are consumers of the social media. Yeah. She's a creator. And yeah. I think that you're so she much- She doesn't consider her off. Much. Right. So you're a lot better off being on the creation side. Yeah. So when people, because I've had people say to other friends, you know, like uh, friends with Garrett G, the Buckleless family, his kids since they were born have kind of been on it as well. And same kind of thing. It's like, well, you know, you spend a lot more time on the creation side. You're actually putting content out. You're doing good. You're helping people. Yeah. Whereas if you're just consuming all the time, you're kind of being spoon fed what the algorithm yeah. wants you to learn and things like that. So yeah. I do think that has a lot of value. Yeah. It was, it's, it's a cool topic and it's one that I like to talk about, but I could also talk about it forever because it is a little bit of a, a risk putting so much out on YouTube and being so vulnerable to 300 million, we get about 300 million views a month. That's 600 million eyeballs if you count each eyeball. You know what I'm saying? That's the amount of the math <laughs> to see how many lifetimes have been spent watching your videos, if you do the, uh, math, I, you know, I like take time. the amount of hours and then put that into like a 75 year lifespan. Like I would be I, interested to hear yeah. how many lifetimes have been spent consuming your videos. I, I bet it's. tell you that I just thousands. got this recap from YouTube and this year we had 72 billion minutes watched of people's lives. Wow. All right, Jonah, get us a number on that. Yeah, I, do I 72 know. billion divided by 60, and that will give us hours, and then I guess we could do days, but... Yeah, and then just figure it's it out. It's hard to really... Oh, I think 78 years is an average lifespan, yeah. so figure it out. I saw a thing on LinkedIn that was like, here's how much this TV show I've never heard of, like new episodes, how many views, and then total views, and then there was like Mr. Beast, new videos, total views, and there's this comparison that Mr. Beast blows mainstream out of the water. It was Grey's Anatomy. Like, Mr. Beast gets way more views than everything in Grey's Anatomy. I was like, I wonder how my seven-year-old daughter compares up to that, and I put her up next to it. It's like, oh, my seven-year-old actually gets more than Mr. Beast and Grey's Anatomy, which is an actual stat, so pretty wild, huh? I love it, dude. Well, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, when what you- is the Jonah? You have to turn your phone sideways in order to do the math. I know. That's how you know it's real if your phone has to go sideways. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to figure that out and come back because it's, it's, it's quite a math problem. And um, well, for me, you know, one of the things that I thought was cool about you is you're not afraid to go for it. And we're coming into a new year. A lot of people have yeah. ideas. A lot of people have dreams. A lot of people want to do that business or you start that, you know, YouTube page or whatever yeah. it is. How do you get past where like, so many people get caught up in just getting it started? So what? What? Oh no, that's my favorite phrase. I always say is you take every single small opportunity and try and turn it into a bigger opportunity. And that's what I did. I was like, I want. I actually had my dream job. I worked for snowboard and skateboard companies that I always wanted to work for growing up. So I wasn't even trying to change my life, but I saw a little opportunity within Snapchat to like, what if I could make videos and get paid, right? And so I took it and turned it into something, which is a whole story, a whole nother podcast just about Snapchat if we wanted to at some point, but it worked, right? And then it was like, what if I could take the opportunity of YouTube? And then it was like, what if we could, you know, animate our videos, do animation? What if we invested in Magic Spoon and other people's ideas, not just our own? And so just every time there's a little opportunity, I would take it. And there's a whole bunch that you don't know about that we don't talk about that we almost did eSports shoes and canceled that idea. And we almost did perfume for YouTubers. Really good idea, but then COVID hit and all this different stuff, right? And it's like, it's okay if they don't work, but you have to take the opportunity or else you'll never know. Well, as an entrepreneur, I can appreciate it because you have so many ideas and some of them don't work, you know, and yeah. I've, I've done a lot of things that didn't work, but then you kind of pull that back and go, well, hold on a second. Maybe it wasn't a success, quote unquote, yeah, but, you but it worked about, because yeah, yeah the yeah. relationships you That's built and the is. skills and knowledge that you picked up. You know, a good example that I saw that just one that comes to my mind is when, you know, Trump, I mean, plenty of things to criticize him for correctly. But one of the things that people always would come at him for was these failed little businesses like Trump Steaks and Trump this or that. And I'm like, I'm like, no, like he was just an entrepreneur trying things. And if you try a lot of things, you're going to have, I mean, any good business person that's had all these successes, you have the failures that are in there as well. And so you kind of have to just understand that it's part of the thing, yep. right? And start small and just get it done, have it be your hobby, put it on social media. I'm super convinced that anyone can find more success, happiness, and fulfillment chasing their hobby using the internet than they can working for someone else. And that could go to an extreme level if you're lucky, but even at a minimal level, like you make this much a year, go make this much a year and do it on your own terms using the internet and you'll be so much more fulfilled. And I really think that's possible right now with the internet more than ever. I think social it's a little bit of a hot take, them. but I like it because yeah. I think too many people, well, for me, I had somebody there, they're just in a job. They're just not really happy. And they're talking about all these different opportunities. And I said, look, I can honestly say I would not spend one day, not one day in a job I did not like. Yeah. Because what is it worth? Uh, it, work is so much of your life. Yeah. If you can't enjoy that yeah. part of it, what are you doing? You know? Yeah. And internet, I mean, super loose. I'm not saying go be a YouTuber or whatever. I'm just saying like, that's it. Don't be at a job you don't like. If there's a small opportunity, go side hustle until it becomes a big one or whatnot. But like, 
using the internet and social media and everything, there's no reason to work at a job you don't want to work at. Well, we live in a time where, I mean, there is so much opportunity and there's so much different, uh, there's a million different ways to make money, more than ever. I mean, yeah. anybody that truly is putting any time and effort into it can figure out a way to make pretty good money in America in 2023. Anything. Yeah. And there's so much opportunity. I have a buddy that, you know, he just started this year, uh, six months ago, he started a company. They would take old spoons and they would make them into rings. And it's a multi six figure company six months later, you know. And I have friends that are just all sorts of just these. But little, they wouldn't know unless they tried out. And all they, cool. And I always tell people if you're afraid to start, then start at two hours a day. Start it for four hours after work or whatever until you can get to the point where you actually get to make that shift and go yeah. full time into it. I'm into it. New year. Do you it. You got our number, Jonah? What is it? 136,986. Years. So 136,000, divide that by 78. Wait, that's years? That's years. Divide Just, that by 78, and that's lifetime spent watching your video. 1,700. Yeah, I bet. I said I was better. I think that's my, I just want to clarify. I don't think that's my this year number. That's the total number. Sure. Not this year, because there's two numbers. All time. In my head, there was the this year's total watch time and then all time. That's all time, but that's still not. So how many, how many lives? Through the lifetime. I have in, I have entertained seventeen hundred lifetimes worth of people. Yeah, and it's pretty nice. By the way, in how many years? When did you start? In two thousand. Yeah, I don't it's not like you're stopped at any years. Time, right? YouTube's been about five or six years. Snapchat's been about seven. So do you have any? Do you have any fear about YouTube changing things, going away? Amazon coming out with something? I mean, is are you? How involved are you in paying attention to the next thing? Versus just protecting what you're already building. For a long time, super worried about it because YouTube is fickle. And all the time, if you're not chasing the algorithm and some of the stuff that we don't need to get into because people focus on it too much. It's not all just this algorithm chase, you know, but like the algorithm can change. Right now, they want to be TikTok, so they're promoting short for right. The past three years, it's been long form, like keep people on your platform. And that's what we've gotten really good at is long form storytelling. And our, our family videos are like 45 minutes of adventure. That's so, awesome. yeah, yeah. And that's good for watch time. But now that they're promoting shorts and TikTok, that's not our style. So there is a worry like, oh, we won't get promoted or whatever. But I have gotten over that because it's just not healthy. You can't control it. And at this point, I think YouTube's so stable and our audience is so stable. That's what it is, is like, if you have, and you got to start somewhere, but if you have a, a in, unstable community that is based on the algorithm, them seeing it, then it is really scary. But to where we're at with our fan base and the, the, the relationship we've built with them outside of YouTube, that's why we started a podcast recently called P for Parents, where we just like talk about parenting stuff with parents. I guess it's still on YouTube, but there's all these different touch points with our audience, the animations, the merch, everything else. So even if YouTube really got weird, we would still have a community. It's kind of web three ish. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah why I mean, on one platform? You have to have a whole bunch. Well, and that's where I, you know, I, people that get sucked in too much into just doing one thing, like you really need to become your own brand in 2023 yeah. so that your audience is going to follow you wherever you're yep. right. And I think there's power of that, you know, use him as an example again, but Joe Rogan's the power of that. I mean, yeah. He can't get canceled because if he did, he'd have a new platform under yep. two seconds that yep. pick him up and pay him even more money. And so yep. Spotify is obviously not yeah. going to do that. So so you leverage YouTube or Snapchat or Instagram or podcast or whatever to get to where you need to be, but then you need to diversify and build around that. And it really comes down to communities. So how do you figure, one of the questions I want to ask you, because you have so much, especially when you're putting out a when you were putting out your best day ever videos, I mean, you had so many videos so often. Um, how do you decide or how do you come up with the content of what you're going to actually talk about or do or share? Yeah. Um, I have a really cool process. Well, it, it changes over time. You know, early days, Snapchat, I was traveling or this, that best day ever when I did it daily vlogs was whatever happened that day. And I just, that was the goal is to make every day the best day ever and work hard, but also find enjoyment and fulfillment from each day. Now life's a little bit different, balance, why family and other jobs that are filming and then also filming. So when I get to those film days, I have a rough outline. If you've seen the show, whose line is it anyway? Right. Yeah. We're like, they're great personalities and then they're given a rough backbone and then fill in the blanks and it turns out hilarious. That's what I do with every video and it makes it fun and authentic and real. So a recent vlog we did that was good is as downstairs working late at night, all family's asleep and I see this mouse run across. I'm like, oh no, we got a mouse in here. It's like a Tuesday. It's like, I tell my wife or my kids, they're going to freak out and that thing's going to be dead the next 24 hours, right? So I didn't tell them. I'm like, Saturday, we're going to be filming a family video. I'll tell them on Saturday morning, and that'll be a fun family video, right? So I've got that in my mind. Also, I know that 
probably the storyline is we're going to want to catch the mouse, but we don't want to do that inhumane because it's on the internet. Well, we don't want to do it inhumane because we're good people, but also the internet will just melt down. (laughs) Um, So we go find the live traps, or so I order the live traps, so we have them in the garage, and then I I get all this ready, right? And in my head, it's like, okay, in the morning, we're going to start out with this super fun thing, Adley had a loose tooth, which is super exciting for kids. Again, know your audience to us. Maybe a loose tooth isn't exciting, but to a six-year-old, oh, yeah, you're going to lose your first tooth, me too. This is everything right now, right? So I know that my audience, it's kids and families. So it starts out, Ad- Adley's going to lose her tooth, whatever. And guys, guess what happened last night? And I break the news to my family on camera right there. We, I saw a mouse. No, really? So Jenny's real reaction, she's mad, right? Like now I'm getting the real stuff and it's awesome and it's not stage, which so much of YouTube is stage, especially on kids and family. You know, when Ryan gets on camera and goes, hi guys, welcome to an, when, it, let's restart that. I won't call him now. You know, <laughs> when, when a family vlogger gets on camera, like, what's up guys? Welcome to another crazy day. And then a pie hits him in the face. He's like, oh, who did that? You know, and it's all stage yeah I hate but when I actually tell my wife that there's a mouse in the basement she didn't know and I get that on camera that's real you know and then we go find it but it's planned out whose line is away I have the trap ready I have this I know we're going to release at pirate island because we haven't filmed there for a while and our audience likes all this stuff so I have a rough outline of what today's going to look like and the family just fills it in with fun and I just roll with it and then it's fun for me because I get to build the story get the angles and watch it all unfold and I don't know what's going to happen and I'm you know teasing them and grabbing the kids ankles and I think it's a mouse and It's all playing out in real time for me, and it's real for me, and it's exciting, and that's what our audience loves. But it's not just wake up and let's see what happens today, and then you have to watch it. And every single one is this amazing experience because we only do one a week, so I want everyone to be amazing. And it is thought out ahead of time, but it is still real and authentic, and that's magical. I don't think too many YouTubers do that. So take that recipe, copy it, paste it onto YouTube, and go have fun. Well, and I think what's cool about the career that you've picked and why – you know, like you said, there can be so much more fulfillment, even if you're not making as much money in doing things like this. Yeah. You get to spend that time with your family. I mean, you're yeah. doing this with the people you Super want to be with. Yeah. Like, what a cool way to yeah. make a living, right? What a cool way to... And work when it's really busy. It's like, oh, we got to play extra with our kids this week, you know, because Christmas break's coming up. We don't have film. So, like, let's do a board game on Tuesday, and then we'll go to the pool on Wednesday, and then let's do the trampoline park on Friday. Like, okay, it's going to be a busy week. We got to go to the pool and trampoline park in one week, you know? Yeah. It's awesome. So you see a lot of content creators, they have their own videographer with them all the time. I mean, you obviously do a lot of your own, especially in the early days with Snapchat and everything. What's your take on it? Because I've I've gone back and forth on this. I want to get more of my, because people always say, dude, you do so many different things. You've got to have more content out there. you got to have more of a video. But for me, it does take away a little bit of me just being there and being with my friends or being in the moment or traveling. If I got this random ass camera in my face, you know, and so... I guess feels less authentic. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I can pull my phone out and be yeah. better at doing that, but that also can, for me, pulls away a little bit of when I'm traveling and doing some of these things. Um, and you know, I guess yeah. it's, it's all, how much do I want to, for me, I love telling this story. I don't, I get, I don't get pulled out of it. Like it's hard for me to not film, you know, like Chris is wearing your kids getting excited. It's like hard for me to not film that moment and that memory, you know? So I like filming as I'm going, but yeah, it's, I've done it so much. I'm just glad you said that though, because I think what I need to do is kind of really understand, like love telling the story through video, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've, uh, cause I, I, people love it. They say, dude, you were in Saudi Arabia and you barely posted anything. It's like, no, none of us are ever going to Saudi Arabia. You got to make video of that. Like all the, and it's like, but, but it might not be in, everyone can do their own thing. But my take on it is it's, it, it's not authentic for the audience to just go fly on the wall, watch you walk around. And it's weird for you to walk around with an entourage of a camera, like doing that or whatnot, right? right? So you just go there, be real, have fun with your friends. This is about a sincere trip with your buddy. I know when you're talking about it's a good time. But then as you're getting on the airplane, you're like, oh, bro, all right, we're getting on the plane. Like last ones, here we go. We're going to like, whatever this guy, we've known him for this long, you know? And then you sit down in your seats, everything's normal. And then middle of the flight, you go walk by, troll him, get a quick shot. And then you land and you're out the window. Oh, we're here. And it's like, you're not taken out of the moment. You're still enjoying it. You're with your buddy. You're being a real person. That's why I correct you earlier. Like, oh, you've grown up in front of the camera. It's like, no, we grew up just totally normal as humans. And then just when I want to, I turn on the camera and catch the moments I want. And then I'm set. I don't have someone following me around. And I don't do this. You know, the work life balance will be like work life balance or work before five and life after five or whatever. It doesn't exist. You just got to be good at delineating both and switching back and forth. Same thing with me personally in filming. And my recommendation for you and everyone else is like, Don't look at it as, oh, if you film, it's not a sincere, real moment. You know what I mean? Like, this is a cool, sincere, real moment. And also, I was thinking I wanted to, like, promo your podcast a little bit. Check out this real sincere moment right here. Look at this. We're on a podcast right here at the Animation Studio. Wanted to shout you guys out. Um, Hello. Just had to get a quick clip. 
See, and then I can throw that on my thing, and they'll just be like, throw it in there, tell them what, and didn't give any context, because I don't know when it's going to go up right sure. but then in my thing, I'd be like, oh, it went on this podcast earlier, and then pop it up, Brandon, and then he pops it up, and how I was talking to your vlogger, they like, pop this up. It feels not curated like I wouldn't want to do it. And you don't have to use this part if you know. We'll use this part because this is part of I I, I love that you just did that because yeah. it shows the realness of, hey, if you're going to be a content creator, yeah. this is what you gotta be committed to the gig, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. Take the opportunity and do it. Yep. And nobody listening to the podcast is like, these guys, do they not remember they're on a podcast? What are they doing? You know, well, they actually it feels more real because when you're sitting at a party, it's not just perfect conversations transitioning and people are cutting and splicing all over, right? You're getting everything. And sometimes the funny parts are the random dude who's drunk in the corner. Like, he shouldn't be like, you know what Yeah, well, I always said, said the best podcast feels like you've sat, you've somehow gotten to sit in on a conversation exactly. you don't deserve to be in on. Right. right. So when we're like, oh, actually, I want to shout this out on my YouTube channel. I do that or whatnot. Or I'm like, oh, pop up the things from this, like the thing. And it's like, oh, have you guys been over there? Well, we need to show you. Like, you know how you're tying a combo and you're like, oh, look at this. And you like show them like that, you know? That's what we just did in the podcast. Like, oh, we did a tour over there. Do you want to see my office? Like, pop it up. And now it feels like we're showing him and it's authentic instead of just sexy B-roll clips with movie before the podcast of our walk to the space station. And then this is super real and then it transitions nicely and stuff. It's a style preference, right? Yeah. But if you do that super like real, then it feels real. I like it. Well, one of the things when I started this podcast, I, that was one of the things I said. I said, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. I don't want to make it too professional. I don't want to make it too stuffy. I want to be able to be flexible. I wanted the quality to be high because yeah. it has to have good audio and good video or people just turn it off, right? But beyond that, that that's an opinion. That's actually I fair. don't, that's I've fair. never used a proper mic and I've filmed over 2,000 videos and have over, what did I say, 87 billion minutes watched or whatever. I've never used a proper mic, never used a lab mic, a boom or anything, just the normal audio from a camera. And lately I usually film on my cell phone because it's just like convenient. And I don't, when I'm carrying a camera on a tripod through the airport, it's a little less real. But when I'm just with my family and then I pull up my phone, do that, that. And then even one step beyond that, I ruined this phone. I got a little bit of water in here and the audio is kind of messed up on it. It's actually a real gold phone from Dubai. I feel like wow. it is really it's, weird. It was money, phone. but it was just a fun memory. Why not? Um, but anyways, it records horrible audio. And I recorded some of my Christmas morning and a couple of the last, like I probably recorded 10 million views worth of content on this crappy phone that actually does have messed up audio. And I don't think it lessens the views. It almost makes it feel more real. Because think how many perfectly made commercials you watch that are annoying and cringy. And then think how many normal conversations at a party or whatever that are loud and you're yelling or whatnot, but they're the most meaningful conversations ever. Well, and TikTok's taught us that, right? The best videos to watch are when people just happen to catch something that's exactly. totally ridiculous yeah. on their phone. And so, yeah, no, I mean... It's, and I'm not trying to contradict you at all. I'm well, just I, showing all the different personalities and perceptions. I'm you know? glad you said something because yeah. I, again, like for me, it's, we have these ideas, we have these limiting thoughts. And even at the beginning of this, I kept talking about just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yep. Yet here I yeah, yeah. And, but have we, things that aren't perfect. That's and I mean, though, don't. We didn't have this setup we did the podcast and it feels good and it's gonna be funny this is gonna be different than any podcast you've ever made yeah. and it's gonna get the most views because it is different it's gonna stand out people are gonna see a side of you or a behind the scenes or whatever that they don't normally see hopefully we don't cut out some of these parts where we're trolling no, no, we're, we're gonna, yeah wow. and then we'll play like put in a whole bunch of us walking through the office and stuff and then also you're gonna put me in the thumbnail with my hair down so people know that that's sean duras or adley's dad and they'll see that thumbnail they'll be more intrigued and click it you'll use me as clickbait it will be completely different content than what they're used to this will be your best performing video in the next couple months for sure well i you know it's funny when i started the podcast i i actually i don't know what what your views are so i don't want to get we've had a few pretty pop but well yeah. you know it's funny though no because i was going to share this because this is for people that are like i don't have any audience i don't have anybody that's interesting i tell people you got to find people that you have access to that are doing more than you are and it, maybe it's just a little bit mm -hmm. and so when i first started i had Again, I had a bucket list family on, and they put it in one of their circles on Instagram, and it blew up. But then I had Charlie Jordan on. She's a big Instagrammer, um, and she did the same thing. And that's how I got my views in the podcast originally and how I got my Instagram from 4,000 to 12,000 to 25,000. Mm -hmm. That's how I did it was by doing those collaborations. And so what I tell people is find a way to create value like I've done with you. Like you, yeah. This will be one of my most watched because yeah. you're a YouTuber. This, you yeah, have exactly. a huge audience. Yep. Your audience will want to watch this. They'll the algorithm can pick it up. Yep, right. exactly. And then they'll learn stuff about me that they never knew because I'm normally talking about fun adventures, not business stuff. So I don't do podcasts like this often. Like Some of the stuff we've talked about is not on the internet yet. So my audience will derive value from this and that's why I want to send them to this video. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really cool. No, and so that's a cool way for people to do it is like find people that are doing something that's cool. Find people that have an audience, have create value, value for them, right? And we did that through the last couple months of just connecting and doing different things. 
and then we have this collaboration now. And so it, it's a good reminder. And it's, I love hearing that because it is so true. It's so many times we get so caught up in needing to be the right thing or the, yeah. the perfect thing. And, and it doesn't, you just, just do it. And I have a cool addition to that, that I've learned over the years at Snapchat into YouTube, same thing, had to collaborate with people, Viners, the Logan Pauls, et cetera. And, uh, I remember speaking, giving the same advice of like, find someone, Devin Supertramp that we talked about. That was my first collaboration. He's way bigger than me, especially on YouTube. But I had a good idea, showed him. He's like, I love that idea. I was like, I'll bring all the skateboarders. We went skateboarding in Moab. So mm-hmm. like skateboarding in Mars. So I'm like, I've got the skateboarders. Here's the idea. Here's some sample footage. He's like, let's do it. So exactly what you said, find someone bigger, provide value. And that's how you grow, right? That's accurate. Do that. Over the next couple of years, I learned something else that everyone out there is chasing that bigger person. And if they're not doing it right, which I don't think we do this, but they'll only collaborate bigger. They'll only look for bigger. And if you're bigger, then they'll respect you and DM back. But if someone who has less followers than you DMs you, not a chance because you're bigger, right? And they always want above and beyond. Nowadays, my favorite thing is I don't look for any collaborations that are bigger necessarily. And we're just kind of doing our own thing. And we had to work really hard to get to that level. But now I like to do collaborations with other people from different industries, that have less followers, whatever, because that's the future. When you collaborate with people that are new and less than you, they're going to bring you up, right? Bucketless family was a homie and he collaborated with me when I was smaller than him and we became friends. And then when I blew up on YouTube, he was like, hey, how do we do this YouTube thing? And then I helped him do it. I was like, wow, look how that came full circle where there's other people that I collaborate, I tried to collaborate with and I was smaller and they're like, nope. And we made a video and they didn't link me in the description. They didn't do what they said. And they're kind of jerks. And then when I surpassed them, they're like, oh, let's do a video together. It's like, no, I don't want to do that. So yes, that's a strategy for growth, but make sure to stay balanced and help the people under you as well. Yeah. So my, my rule that I have is for every person I reach up to, I reach down to one. That's a cool that's idea. The rule. Yeah. I mean, that way you're always staying in that balance. And if you go, there's a thing called, it's called Owl Hoot or something like that. Owl Tell or something. Yeah. It tells you every podcast you've been on uh-huh. and you can kind of see, it's like, I've been on some big podcasts. I've been on Brad Lee's show. I've been on some other yeah. podcasts. I've been on other ones. And then I've been on some that have like yeah. eight years. But know, that's cool. 32 yeah. years. And I'm like, but I do it because I remember I'm always reaching up. I mean, I'm yeah, reach exactly. out to you. I know how busy yeah. you are, right? Yeah. And so like for me, I just honor the fact that, hey, all these people gave me their time. So mm-hmm. I'll give my time to the other person. Yeah. And what I do is I just want to see if they're taking it serious. Like if they're consistently putting out a podcast once every week or once every whatever, if they're just consistent – then I'll say yes. It or if you believe in them and they're in the company, it's like an investing in a company. You don't just invest in companies that are huge. You yeah. invest in new companies that you believe in. Yeah. Take that same concept with a, a person or a creator and someone that you believe in as potential, invest in them and help them pop it and then be part of their story. And they'll always, and it's not contractual and you don't say it, but that's how the space is is created. I think we've pr- created so much value for so many YouTubers and people within the creator economy that everyone just, we, we have this network and reciprocation and yeah, it's a cool thing, man. The amount of people that helped me get here and the amount of people that I've helped get here. Now the people I helped are bigger and the people that helped me are smaller. And like everyone just jumbles around. But yeah. if you just be cool, you'll you'll survive. If you're really nitpicky and you only go bigger and you, you put others below you down, it doesn't work. And I've watched other people do that first time. Yeah, so no, that's great. real advice. Real deal right there. It's great, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. It's uh, it's the last day of 2022. I know. It's Four cool. Days, La- last podcast. I hit your last podcast of the year. Did, did. You hit my first day. podcast of the year. Well, I appreciate it, by the way, because Jonah told me you haven't done a podcast in years. No, that's why I'm saying. Like, this that's might awesome. be my first podcast of the year other than my P for Parents one. That well, just life. going back to our point, right? I created yeah. value for Jonah in his personal life. Yeah. And he said, I want to help Jimmy. And so he says, dude, you got to meet Sean Durris. Yeah. So through that recommendation, then looking at yourself, and then I was actually interested in what you do. Because while you may have stuff to learn from me about YouTube or community building, I have tons to learn, learn from you. You know what I mean? Like you've had your own experiences and journey and what the little I've learned from your group. It's so awesome. Like I got to get on one of those adventures. We got know? you, bro. Right. Okay, no, no, we'll have you come. So I would have loved nothing more. Perfect. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. And uh, if, for people that want to learn more that maybe aren't as familiar with you at this point, where should we send them? Everything's at Shonduras, like Honduras, the country, but with the S in front of it. Or you can go to spacestation.com or spacestationgaming.com or spacestationanimation.com or spacestationintegrations.com or spacestationapps.com or quartermachine.io. So there's some I miss. Space Station Investments, maybe. (laughs) There's some other ones, but just look around, do some Google searches. Appreciate Good stuff. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. Hey, in the comments, write one thing that this guy should do in the next podcast because I think that you have a lot of these podcasts where you sit down and you like share a lot of knowledge. I want to see these podcasts where you're like up on a ski hill and you're like doing the podcast in a chairlift and then snowboarding. You're like doing karate lessons in the body. Like 
Leave some comments what this guy should do with his podcast because we need to get him crazy. Love it. Thanks, my man. Okay. Peace. I'm like, I, YouTube's like, I have such a, like, I really enjoy doing it. Yeah. I was making videos when I was a kid just yeah. for shits and giggles, and they were funny. Like, we were crazy. And we were just yeah. doing it to entertain ourselves for yep. the night, you know? It's like, man, if there would have been cameras on our phones oh, and YouTube back then, I used to do, we dude, I, I, oh, I would have I would have been viral by a, 17, 100%. We were crazy. I had no filter. Same, but, but we would have been kind of canceled like, viral would have by 20. <laughs> That's what, also, I'm like, what if it done Viral me, by 17, It would have dummied me 20. down because I would have done something, got in trouble, and then my parents would have told me to knock it off, and they yeah. would have completely squashed it's my true. dream. Grass it's, is greener until you stand on it, and you're like, no, it's digital grass. Take me back to the past. <laughs> so I literally just wrote a blog today. I haven't released it. I'll probably release it in the next day or two, but it was like, like, you just have to, if you're gonna get into the space, you just have to know a lot of people are just not gonna like what you do. It's yeah. like, yours is pretty innocent. Like, you yeah, probably yeah. don't have too many people coming at you. It's crazy how much we don't have haters for how many of these. Yeah, I would think that really your stuff's them. really hard. I mean, you gotta, it's like, you gotta you, be a real asshole. Yeah, yeah exactly. But everyone else, depending whether it's a video game or this, it's opinionated in their style and for their audience. And yeah, it's but, a rough uh, space. Why well, like, Reagan's kind of considered by both sides of the aisle probably the best president of the last 50, 100 years. He had his highest approval rating ever was 68%. That meant 32% of the people still did not like him, yeah. the so most popular dude. Change, so it's like, you're if you're gonna do rules. shit, you gotta be yeah. ready for the haters, you know? It's really cool. This is the story of the how actually we Taylor got Swift. here. Yeah, well, because a lot of people do exactly what you just did. They'll say, oh, these are all the famous people, or I've heard like the crew call it like a flex story. wall. And it's like, I have, flex yeah. wall. I have a picture of every country I've been to. Yeah, that's so cool. it's like me in 95 countries. But for me, this isn't a flex wall. It's the story of like, this is what it took to get here. Because I think sometimes, especially with this many crew, yeah, you know, cool. like going into the new year and looking at our goals and our vision, it's like, a lot of them think like it's a normal job or like they feel <laughs> entitled to like this cool lifestyle and everything. And it's is a cool reminder for me. Last night when I walked right here, I was like, holy crap, like all of this, like I had to meet these Grinding. people yeah, yeah. I, like in order to be validated by other people. Like Lil Wayne didn't do anything for my career, but this picture of Lil Wayne that I did and did a Snapchat, Dude, you, when people saw that, then they're like, I want to play an esports horde for you Dude, or whatever. I built my real estate career the exact same way. Yeah, exactly. Like, I yeah, knew yeah, that yeah. if I was friends with the most legit dudes in town, yeah. then the hottest girls would come around. I knew if I had the hottest girls around, the most of the <laughs> dudes would come around, and I built this little castle between the two of them. I swear to God, same, but just with the YouTubers guy instead of hot girls. girls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get it yeah. though. People that have yeah. people want to meet. But yeah, so if you look Dude, at this, it. it's it, it is people, but it's like I had to meet these people in order to get to the next steps, and I had to win these awards in order to get the validation. And totally. this was the first ever Snapchat filter. That was right after I talked to Evan, like directly about wow. Snapchat. And then I got out. Their office was in Venice. Yeah, so I was yeah, like, yeah. well, I'm gonna use that Snapchat filter because no one's ever done a Snapchat filter before and get a cool shot. You know what I mean? Like these are all stories. That was when I hung out with our very first PUBG team that we had for a year, and like. Like I had to become their friends to sign them because we didn't have credibility as an esports org, and they signed because I was their actual friend, went and shot guns with them, and that I knew Casey Neistat, and that I had hung out with Lil Wayne, and like that validation, you know what I mean? It all builds up. Oh, so yeah. this Dude, is I, the story I, of how we this, get farther. What's funny about like people think I just always wanted to go out every night. Couldn't have been further from the truth. Yeah. I just knew that I had to go meet yep. the right people every night. And yep. so I was willing to go to whatever event or party. Yeah. And I'm confident it's that if so I get in the true, room dude. with that person, yeah. I can create a relationship. Yeah. But, you know, because you can get in the room with but whoever. And if you can't actually do it, no, party. dude. Well, I've, athletes uh, are the worst hang ever. <laughs> they just are. They're the worst. The jazz players were the worst. I just like only did it because everyone wanted to meet them. And so it was like, well, how can that help benefit yeah. the other people in my life? You yeah. Know? It's it's cool to meet other people and whatnot, but not being, I've never drinking alcohol or gotten drunk necessarily. So that's usually what the after parties were for sure. any event or whatever. And so, yeah, going to like a bar tricky. and having to scream loud to <laughs> network with people and make connections and your throat sore and it's 2 a.m. and your worse. pocket's full of drink tickets that you don't even need to use and you're just like, well, hopefully that turns into something next week.